For the design and assembly of this electrical panel, the technical regulations, the National Electricity Code, which applies in Mexico, the United States, among other countries, have been considered. Shown here is the box that houses the meter or counter, and the box where the load center that will distribute the electrical energy to the entire home will be mounted. Let's focus on the meter box. If we remove this element, we would have the base of the meter where the electrical cables will be connected. These cables come from the electrical distribution network from a transformer and line 1 is connected to terminal 1, line 2 to terminal 3, and the neutral reaches the central terminal and then to terminal 5. Now, from terminals 2 and 4, the corresponding cables are connected and taken to the box where the charging center will go. The two line wires run to the main breaker which is usually between 100 to 200 amps. While the neutral wire is connected to the neutral bar. It is also possible to consider a protective cable for grounding the meter, which is connected from the neutral terminal. In this way we ground the neutral to ground. If we place the meter on its base, we can already have power that reaches the main switch. Therefore, if we enable this switch by moving the lever, we would already have electrical energy in the metal sheets where the pickups or breakers will be mounted. If up to this point, we make a measurement to see what voltage, we would have the following. If we measure the voltage between one of the live lines with respect to the neutral, we would have a voltage of 120 volts. On the other hand, if we measure between the two live lines we would have a voltage of no more and no less than 240 volts. And that is because of the type of configuration of the transformer coils, which could be explained in a separate topic. It is also possible that between line and neutral there is a voltage of 110 volts and between line and line there is 220 volts. This will depend on where you live. To continue with the assembly of the electrical panel, we must disable the main switch and remove the meter. In this way, we would no longer have electrical energy reaching the panel and thus carry out the assembly and wiring of the other distribution switches. Here we can see in more detail how the elements are mounted on the board. The metal sheets that provide the live lines have an angle that allows them to connect with each breaker. These elements that make up the load center or electrical panel, I will detail below. A load center or electrical panel can consist of thermomagnetic switches with standard protection against overload or short circuit. For this case, a single pole circuit breaker circuit is shown, where, generally, some technical data is printed on the front, such as, the nominal current, which in this case is 15 amperes. Maximum short circuit current and voltage. This device, in the lower front part, has a pair of metal sheets that, when they come into contact with the sheet of the electrical panel, allow the current to circulate as shown. First, I am going to consider the breakers for the lighting circuit for either the living room, kitchen, bedroom, and bathrooms. Also, another breaker for exterior lighting. The wiring represented in a general way would be as follows. From the output of the breaker, we connect and take the live cable line 1 to the switch and then to the terminal that indicates the central part of the socket or lamp holder. Now, from the neutral bar, we take a cable to the terminal that indicates the threaded part of the socket. A ground wire must also be considered which goes to the switch and is also connected to the metal part of the box where the spotlight or luminaire is located. The same would be true if a second breaker is considered for lights for a second floor or for exterior lighting. With the difference that active line 2 is now used, and the current would flow as indicated, of course in this case I am assuming the current in only one direction, but this is to better understand how electrical energy flows. Be careful, the cables in the panel must be carried along the sides, just for the explanation I have arranged it that way, since later the most appropriate order that it should be carried will be shown. Also, a circuit for bathroom contacts or outlets will be considered. 
We must take into account that these elements have GFCI protection, that is, against current leakage to ground. The breaker could also have this protection. Another breaker would also be used for the garage part, which should consider a GFCI protected outlet. Previously this was not considered, but according to the current code 2020 it is considered. In the video description, I am going to leave you the reference table with the protection requirements for each part of the home. It is also possible to consider bipolar or dual breakers. This element is usually used when you have machines that require a voltage of 230 or 240 volts, such as motors, air conditioning, stoves, etc. These can be 15, 20, or more amperage. The connection is made using the two hotline wires and the ground wire. In some cases, the outlets also have a terminal for connecting the neutral wire. Another element that must be included in the electrical panel is the arc fault circuit breaker. While standard breakers offer a basic level of protection against electrical fires, AFCI devices use advanced technology to continuously monitor the flow of electricity in the circuit, and if it detects any unwanted arcing signals, it immediately cuts off the electricity. In summary, AFCI protection consists of preventing electrical fire. The physical appearance of this device is as shown. On the front there is a test button for manual testing to confirm that the device works correctly. To this device, it is necessary to connect the neutral through the white cable. Also, it has two output terminals or terminals, or it indicates which side the neutral output cable and the hotline output cable should go. An explanation of the connection on the electrical panel will be seen shortly. According to the current National Electricity Code, it indicates that these devices should be used as protections in kitchens, laundry rooms, family rooms, terraces, living rooms, etc. In the video description, I will leave the complete table. For wiring, it is necessary to connect the neutral wire to the white wire connected to this device. Then, at its exit, we will have two cables, the live cable and the neutral cable, which go to the respective outlets, including the ground cable. These outlets can be standard, that is, without built-in protection, or they can also have GFCI protection. The use of one or the other will depend on which section of the house it is going to be used. For this you must consult the electrical code current. Another important element is also the ground fault circuit interrupter. This device is designed to keep people safe from deadly electrical shock. When an electrical current diverted to ground exceeds a certain value, the GFCI switch interrupts the electricity immediately. These elements can be 15, 20 or more amperes in nominal current and a sensitivity of 10 milliamps or less. According to the current National Electricity Code, it indicates that these devices should be used as protections in kitchens, garages, laundry rooms, bathrooms, air conditioning, among others. The electrical wiring is very similar to AFCI devices. It is also possible to find both protections in a single device, which are usually used for the kitchen circuit, laundry rooms or other areas that require this double protection. Let's look at the wiring part quickly. To do this, I am going to skip for a moment the cables that reach the main or service switch. The meter must also be removed for safety until wiring is completed in the load center. From each breaker the phase cable is taken and from the neutral bars the neutral cable is taken and both, together with the ground cable, are taken to their respective pipe that is distributed in the home. It is recommended to use the color in the cables as indicated in the standard so that there is no future confusion. For wiring a double breaker, you can use both phases and obtain 240 volts, and you could also include the neutral wire. 
For AFCI and GFCI switches, it is necessary to use the neutral wire. And at the exit of these devices we already have both line and neutral wires that go to the pipes. The wiring for the breakers on the right side would be the same. Finally, the ground wire must be connected to lead to ground. For grounding, it can be done as shown, that is, one from the load center and another from the meter and both must be joined by wire. Another way to do this is to join the neutral service wire with the protective ground wire in the load center box and then ground it. When you finish wiring and on the lid of the load center box, a label must be included with the markings specifying which area of the house each breaker is for. Well mates, that's it for this video. I hope this magnificent information is useful to you. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and share this valuable information. See you soon.